Well, I figured it was time for a, another Ron Paul video. Um, I actually went to his website and, uh, you know, Ron Paul 2008, and uh, it was amazing um, just to see how scant the information was, barely paragraphs on major issues, and that's all he's got, paragraph, you know, two paragraphs maybe. Incredible. He's running for President of the United States. Um, people call him this breath of fresh air. Uh, there's no air here. You know, how could it be fresh air? It's not even air. There's no substance. There's nothing. There's this, you know, mushy little simplistic rhetoric that doesn't say anything. So anyway, let's get to it. Uh, so the, on the issue of health care, um, the, the big accomplishment, uh, okay, let's talk about what wasn't there. Nothing about reforming the health care system, reforming health insurance, um, nothing about, you know, making it more accessible, any of that shit. Nothing about, um, you know, the right to die. And uh, it would save this country trillions. It would, it would actually, th probably the greatest and, and easiest and simplest and less hurtful policy that could ever be imposed to save zillions of dollars would be just to simply give people who wish to say, you know, end, to slide off, to gracefully exit, the right to gracefully exit. It's, it's you know, the average person spends $100,000 in the last seven months of their life. It's a lot of money, and uh, we're, we're fools to think that all those people want it, because they don't. Uh, most of them don't even know they're still alive. And that makes this expenditure so preposterous, such a huge waste of human resources um, on dead people. I mean, they really are already dead. We're just, you know, we're, we're just playing an emotional game. Um, well, anyway, I, I don't want to get completely caught up in that issue. So his great proposal is, I mean, it's the Food and Drug Administration, apparently a big, huge problem. And, um, you know, he, he, he's pushed some bill that will uh, truthful health information regarding supplements and natural remedies. That's going to solve our problems, is, is supplements and natural remedies. So some shark cartilage and, and uh, you know, a mag, you know, a copper and, and magnetic bracelets are going to, what's going to save uh, the American health care system. Uh, what a pile of crap. Um, you know, he wants to open it up to alternative medicines and new treatments. We know that's 90, 99% of it's snake oil. It's just like, oh yeah, let's bring back a Laetrile you know, ground up peach pits and start injecting that into, into sick people. Um, okay, and he actually makes the accusation there in his little two paragraphs that uh, the government has wasted public funds attacking safe, healthy um, foods and supplements. I, I'd like him to substantiate that with something. I mean, that the where the government has wasted public funds attacking safe, healthy foods and supplements. That would be interesting. Um, so anyway, and then on the Homeland Security front, part of the health care, which I don't know is that related, but anyway, it's, I think in the Home Security Bill there's some kind of proposal that if there's a smallpox outbreak that there would be a mandatory requirement to get vaccinated, and he opposes that. Yeah, so, you know, <clears throat> we shouldn't do anything to stop something as vicious as smallpox. Whatever. I mean, stupidest, idiotic proposals. All right, so on the economy, yes, he says we should lower taxes. <laughs> uh, yeah, fine. Uh, and then you have to lower spending to do that. Um, you know, so let's get to it. You tell us what you're going to cut, and uh, we'll see. Um, you know, but the real bottom line is he just wants to lower income taxes. He doesn't care about regular people taxes. Um, and again, it brings up the Federal Reserve. Um, that increasing the money supply, you know, is devaluating your money and all this crap. And yeah, yeah but by the same token, it's making your mortgage affordable. And, uh, you know, instead of paying 30% on your credit card, you're paying, you know, maybe if you're lucky, 7%. Um, so anyway, just really stupid. Um, you know, and so just more nonsense, you know. Uh, foreign governments, you know, funding our runaway spending. Yeah, well, we all know the spending thing. We all seen it happen year after year after year. There's a budget, and they over budget, and they borrow the money. We've seen it. 
um, you know, I, I, it's not a huge new innovative proposal to say, yeah, we should really balance the budget. People have talked about that for decades. Um, uh, then he talks about foreign powers deciding the size of our budget, you know, the foreign banks and the foreign... No, we decide. The American people vote for this moronic bad policy. There's no foreigners making the decision. The people make the decision, and it's not a wise decision. But that's because assholes like you don't want to, you know, you want to give breaks, tax breaks to the rich, and so they don't pay enough taxes, and we have to borrow the money. It's that simple. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, better speed it up here. Uh, you know, on f foreign policy or, you know, uh, immigration, independence and security, he calls it. Um, well, he's opposed to the free trade agreements. Um, and... Uh, uh, you know, and, and, and he's, the concern is, too, is that these, you know, NAFTA and the World Trade Organization, the rest of them are somehow prohibiting alternative treatments, you know, medical treatments, apparently. Apparently they're, yes, they're somehow having horrible laws that are doing something. Well, anyway, and then there's some crap in there about the U.N. taxing us, and later he says he wants to abolish our participation in the U.N. anyway. So why would the U.N. tax bother him if he wants to abolish the organization anyway? Um... So foreign policy, he, you know, just makes the threat that there's new calls for a draft. Yes, but we know there's no, especially with the Democrats in power, there's no, no realistic threat of the draft coming back, so that's just a pile of crap. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he, he advocates abolishing our participation in the UN, and that we should have open trade. Uh, yeah, but he's opposed to free trade. So he's opposed to free trade agreements, but he wants open trade. So I guess that basically just means, yes, he wants trade, child labor, you know, pollute your country to pieces, and it's all okay. Um, so, and then this was an important one. I hope I don't run out of time here. Um, strong pro-life commitment. That's what he describes it as. He says he's proved his strong pro-life commitment. So you know the guy would put in a Supreme Court judge that would abolish Roe versus Wade. He's, he's actually written legislation to do that, to, to abolish the federal court's right to even judge the issue and to give women that liberty. So he is fanatically um, uh, anti-abortion. And uh, so he fanatically, that's, you, we all know it's a religious fucking belief, right? You do understand that, you atheists who are for this Ron Paul asshole. You really understand that the only way you can possibly conceive of an abortion being a crime is you have to be religious. Because any rational person knows that it doesn't have the consciousness of a goddamn grasshopper. <sighs> You know, I mean, really. I mean, he's talking about from conception here. He's not talking about fifth trimester or something, abortions. He's talking about aborting a fertilized fucking egg, and he's calling it a human life. <clears throat> All right? That's a religious fanatic. And so you're, that's the fanatic you're supporting, you jackasses. Um, so he wants no federal funds for population control. None. Zero. Okay, can't even talk about it, can't pay for it, can't try to control ignorant morons from having too many kids. Um, so yeah, he would abolish Roe versus Wade, and uh, um, yeah, he's, you know, he uses the rhetoric like protect all the innocent life. Yeah, I'm sure he doesn't give a damn about it. If the life is born retarded, though, it's going to have to beg on the street because he's not going to make any provision for the care and feeding of that life. All right, so, um, yeah, hopefully I'll make it. Uh, so on the gun rights, yes, he wants to repeal the Brady Bill, so no time limits, no waiting, no anything. Just buy your handgun at the 7-Eleven uh, and shoot your wife the same night. Yeah, great policy. Um, firearms in national parks, he actually proposed legislation to stop that. It doesn't, you know, everybody should just be able to go in a national park, and yes, well, I accidentally shot a bald eagle, so fucking what? Arrest me if you can, right? I mean, what the hell? Um, yeah, put guns in the on the airlines so all the off-duty drunk cops. I mean, we've seen them in our own town. You know, they they go on trips and they get themselves loaded and then they wave their gun around in in fucking bars. And yeah, so they should be, you know, armed and dangerous on airplanes. Yeah, another great policy. Um, yeah, and participation in the UN again. Um, Okay, and what's this last one? Oh, stopping gun rights. So, yeah, he's, he's opposed that there was a bill apparently to 
um, suspend the gun rights of, of um, post-traumatic syndrome veterans. And so he thinks that's a bad idea. So yeah, we shouldn't even let psychiatry, uh, you know, even try to prevent the homicidal massacres that take place, uh, you know, by crazy people. It's crazy, silly jackass. All right, Social Security. Uh, he called the system broken, broken. You know, so it's apparently doubly broken. No, it's not broken at all. It was funded through the next 40 years. Uh, but the rich don't want to pay their income taxes, and so they're borrowing all the trust fund money, $2 trillion worth that the rich owe the Social Security trust fund. And they're not going to pay it, apparently. And Ron Paul wants to make sure of that.